But other Lakota were still willing to carry on the fight for justice and freedom. As many as 3,000 Lakota had refused to sign the 1868 treaty and continued to live in the Powder River region, designated by the U.S. as unceded Indian territory. These Lakota turned to Sitting Bull and Crazy Horse, two honored war chiefs for leadership. Crazy Horse forcefully stated his people's position. We did not ask you white men to come here. The Great Spirit gave us this country as a home. We do not want your civilization. We would live as our fathers did and their fathers before them. The already strained peace was shattered when gold was found in the sacred Black Hills within the boundaries of land recognized as Lakota Reservation in the 1868 Treaty. Under pressure from gold seekers to seize the Black Hills from the Lakota, the United States government offered to buy the land the Lakota knew as Paha Sapa. Sitting Bull and Crazy Horse were opposed to selling the sacred land. But the government was not dissuaded. The religious concerns of the Lakota were not of primary concern to the settlers and prospectors pushing the government, nor were the terms of the Treaty of 1868. Newspaper editorials contributed to the climate of hostility toward the Lakota. What shall be done with these Indian dogs in our manger? They are too lazy and too much like mere animals to cultivate the fur. There was nothing that could uh, stir an irrational mania quite like uh, the very hint of gold in some recess of the West. And as uh, one of the senators commented, uh, the American people will override uh, every Indian tribe and every regiment of the U.S. Army to get at where the gold is, and there is no stopping them. On December 1st, 1875, the U.S. government issued an ultimatum to the Lakota. Come to the reservation within 60 days, or be considered hostile and at war. Few Lakota paid attention to the government's threats. The mission of doing battle with the formidable Lakota was given to General Custer, a well-known and popular hero of the Civil War. June, 1876. Custer and the 7th Cavalry searched the Northern Plains for Lakota warriors. Not far from Custer's position, warriors following Sitting Bull and Crazy Horse joined together with a large number of disappointed reservation Lakotas and bands of Cheyenne. They were encamped along a river they called the Greasy Grass. Custer and his men knew it as the Little Bighorn. June 25, 1876. A scouting party sent by Custer spotted a handful of Lakota warriors and returned to report their position. The colonel decided to launch an attack, waiting for neither scouting intelligence nor reinforcements. With fierce strategy and skill, Sitting Bull's forces engaged Custer's army in numbers much larger than the lieutenant colonel had anticipated. Outmanned, outfought, and outmaneuvered, the 7th Cavalry was defeated in less than two days of fighting. The Little Bighorn, of course, is the grandest victory in all the history of hostilities, all the history of uh, uh, Great Plains warfare. Uh, but in that victory lay the seeds of defeat because that was so spectacular a uh, disaster for the U.S. Army, uh, so stunning to the American people in this centennial year when they're celebrating a hundred years of independence that there was an immediate demand uh, for retaliation.